One more shout as the preacher comes. One more shout. Take me back, Lord, to that place 
What thanks have he for sinner also do the same? And if he lend to them of whom he hoped to receive, what thanks have he for sinner does the same? But love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great. And he shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind and to and thankful and to be and to the evil. Verse 36. Be he therefore merciful, as your father also is merciful. Father, we thank you for this word. And we thank you, Lord, that it will break the stony heart of the people in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that you will take us back to that place where we first receive you, Lord. Yes. Where, Father, we call you our Father. Yes. So we thank you today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes. Walking in the Spirit. We have to learn to walk in the spirit. I don't know if most of you here right now would agree with me reading the scripture. It's asking a hard thing. It's asking a hard thing. Love your enemy. Love those that want to kill you. Those that come and beat you up, love them. Do good to them. Give them whatsoever you have, whatsoever they ask of. For me, this seems impossible to do. But because we are walking in the Spirit of God, it becomes possible. If we are walking, when we are walking in the flesh, there is no way we can actually live this. And I'm saying to myself that the reason why I'm living this life is just because I don't want my soul to be lost. And that's the whole reason. Because when I actually started the journey with, with, with Christ many, many, many years ago, they told me that your life will be easy. The road will be easy. There will be no, no, no ruts in the road. But I find that when I started to run on this journey, I picked up so many punches on this journey. But yet, the Holy Spirit is there like my spare tire that allow me to put it on again and I run. Amen. I came here today, this afternoon, to encourage us that we should walk in the Spirit and allow the Spirit of God to guide us, to guide our, our footsteps. Too long, we have been living our own lives and don't care about what God want us to, to do and we are shunning God, God's way of living and actually will live our own way of life. If you are disobedient to me, I'm not going to keep you in my house. If you are disobedient to God, he will not take you to heaven. So you've got to learn to obey God in the name of Jesus. We have to learn to put away those things that, that, that the enemy comes. Because you've got to understand that the enemy comes to steal, to destroy, and to kill. So whatsoever the God has anointed or put inside of you, the enemy comes to kill it. And sometimes we as Christians, we allow the enemy to kill what God has already planted in us. Because we are so 
divided. We are so disobedient. And we are so into our own selves. And when you are into your own self, you can't see God, you can't hear God. All you want to see is what you want to see. Hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. But today we come and I just want to ask you to look into yourselves. Look into yourselves. Ask God to check you out and see if there's any wicked ways in you. How much of us, sometimes we come to the church, but we're not sitting beside Sister Mary. Because we have a problem with Sister Mary. Sister Mary don't have a problem with you. She can sit anywhere, but you ain't sitting beside Sister Mary because you got a problem. I'm saying it today for you to break up your folly ground and begin to walk in the spirit of the living God where you can hear God, where you can see him. I am lifted up. We come to church and I hope no one's sitting in my seat. And if someone sits in your seat, then you will get upset and you, you, you make a look at that person as if that get up out of my seat because that my seat. We come to church to worship God in spirit and in truth. So if you're walking through this door, come inside here. Mark you, I'm not rebuking you because that's not, not my place to do rebuke. I'm just telling you what the Lord said. Put those things outside. Yes. Walking into the church, enter into his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Enter into his courts with praise. So when you come inside here, I'm, I'm telling you that the, the, the positive, we're gonna hit some positive, and then we're gonna catch a place of fire. But when you walk in with your negative, your negative in the church is like everyone begin to bounce off on you. You need to look into yourselves and ask God to fall afresh and new. Lord, fall afresh on me. Just fall afresh, Lord. Fall afresh. Help me to love those who I hate. We are not living for Satan. We are living for the God, the living God, the God of heaven, the God of create heaven and earth. We are living for him. But you know, most of us, this job in my spirit this morning, and most of us are like power banks. You know what the power banks are? The power banks is my device I plug my device into the power bank to charge. So this suck every energy out of the power bank. And if I don't recharge that power bank, there will be no energy, no power inside of it. And sometimes people come into the church and they suck every single energy out of you and you don't go back to recharge your we need to. Lord, take me back to that place. The place where I first receive you. I remember when I received God, I, I tell you, nothing could have stand before me. Nothing but the enemy say, you know what? What are you trying? I'm going to lick you down. But I understand that every time the enemy beat me down, I get up back again. But not only that I get up again, the higher he go and drop me, the higher I bounce above him. So I said, Satan, you can't hold me down. 
Every time you knock me down, I'm going to get up because you know what? I remember the word of God. He said, a righteous man may fall seven times, but he's going to get up again and he's going to move in the name of Jesus. Nothing will hold me back or hold me down. I'm not going to allow someone or anything to let me miss my prize. There's too much to gain than to lose. I'm not going to allow someone or some situation let me lose my way. There's no way. If I, one writer said, if I should die and my soul should be lost, there's nobody else falls but mine. Where are you at today in your spiritual walk with God? What would you do now if you know that God within five minutes, God would burst the cloud of heaven and come for its people? Would you change what you're doing? How would you continue to do the same? I myself personally would do the same thing. Because what? I'm living for Jesus Christ. I'm not going to run and say, well, oh God is coming, God is coming. I, I just want to get myself right. No, live right. That's what he said. Live right. We can't be a Christian and then we hate each other. We got to walk in the spirit of the living God. Can, can, can I read uh, Galatians chapter 5? Yeah. Galatians chapter 5 and uh, the verse, verse, verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love. How much of us inside here have love? Yes. Some of us don't even have joy. Some of us don't even have peace. Long suffering, we don't have long suffering. Gentleness, how much of us have gentleness? Goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against us there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh, the affection, and lust. Just read verse 25. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another envying one another. And most times we Christian, we do the opposite. We envying people. You see people at your workplace and they have certain jobs, you're envying them. You're not praying for them. But in Luke it said, pray for your enemies. Do good to them that despitefully use you and abuse you and that's the reason why I'm saying that it seems hard but because we're living the life for Christ we got to do it who am I repre representing I am an ambassador whether you think it or not but I am an ambassador for Christ I am here to set example. I'm here to walk the way that Christ walked on this planet. And I'm not saying I'm, I've got the mic and I'm, I'm here standing before you and saying that, oh, I am Mr. Perfect. No, I'm not Mr. Perfect. And if no one here is perfect, 
The Bible says that our, fil our, 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 our perfectness is like a filter of righteousness. None of us are perfect. Sometimes someone trip you up on the road and you just want to say something, but you remember, what would Jesus say? Would he say this? So you got to talk to yourself. I'm not mad while I'm talking to myself because even the psalmist said, you can talk to yourselves. We can talk to ourselves. I'm not mad. But I'm talking to myself. What would Jesus do? Jesus, would you do this? Sometimes you get the answer right away. So when I wanted to do the things, I just hold back. Because I don't want to lose my way because of someone that not going down my street trying to derail me. And that's what people are here for, to derail you. I just want to ask one question, rhetorical question. Is there someone here today that you don't really, don't really, I don't really check for that person? I want you not to go to the person, but to go to God and just ask God, I want you to renew my spirit. The spirit within me. I want you to empower me. I want you to charge up my power bank so I can forgive those who I hate. Pray for them. That's what the Bible says. And that's the reason why I'm saying that it seems to be a hard thing. But because Jesus said it, I'm going to try to do it. Not because I want to do it, but because he command me to do it. And that's the reason why I'm doing it. So I'm walking down the road, but yet there's someone I know that tried to do me things a couple of years ago, but he's on the wayside. <coughs> Am I going to pass? Turn my the other way? Or am I going to help with a helping hand? His grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this way just because of you. Your grace and mercy, Lord. Your grace and mercy. And because of the, His grace and mercy, because the word say that we should show mercy unto them because of your father which are merciful and that's the reason why I will show mercy people cuss me up but yet I still don't show no face because of his grace and mercy have you ever been to the place where, where, where the enemy is saying that okay ju just don't deal with that But on the other side, what the enemy is saying don't deal with is what Jesus said, I want you to deal yes. with this. Yes. But the enemy said, no, come over here. You deal with this. Your success here. There's a lot to gain here. But over here, it seems that every time I do something, you kick me in my face. But yet, Jesus is saying, take another key. Turn the other tree. <coughs> and every time I'm walking by, I, I, I'm telling you, don't take my goodness and abuse me. Because I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart. I'm not doing it because I love you. I'm doing it because Christ loved you and loved me. So sometimes if, if you don't love the person, you can still pray for the person. Not because you love him or her, but because Jesus loved him or her. And that's the reason why I will pray for them. So when 
the devil say, what are you doing? It's just like the devil know that I've been commanded by God, by the living God, to do this. Amen. And I'm going to do it. Because, you know what? At the end of the day, there's a prize to be won. So, I'm running this race. And I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. But there's someone at the side will distract you for you to actually slow down. Then someone else pass you. I'm running this race. I'm not going to allow you to distract me. Because I know where I'm going. And I know who is calling me. And he's according me by my name. Come, you can do it. You can do all things through Christ who's strengthening you. So no matter how hard this sounds, I'm going to do it. But while I was looking yesterday, I was just sitting down. And I said, but this would sound more realistic. In Exodus 20. 1, 24 through to 25. This sound more realistic than that. Yeah, man. An eye for an eye. <laughs> and a tooth for a tooth. A hand for a hand. A foot for a foot. Burn for burn. Wound for wound. And bruise for bruise. I said, yeah, man, that, that sounds like it. But that's not what God wants me to do. The enemy is saying, man, give him back what he gives you as hard as he can. Give him as hard as you can. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. Gentleness. Joy. This life that we're living as a Christian, it's hard. And that's the reason why some people will not make it into heaven because they're going to take the easier way. And I'm going to hit your eye out because you hit mine out. But you hit mine out, I'm going to forgive you because the word of God says, forgive. At the end of the day, I'm going to get to heaven and I will have my eyes back. I'm going to live the life for Jesus Christ down here. So an eye for an eye, it's, it's, it sounds like it. It sounds like the perfect deal, man. But for Jesus Christ, he said, no, 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 no. You don't do that. That's not what I want. I want you to have peace. Let that peace of me run through you. Have you noticed when they were talking to Jesus? And no matter what they say about him, he didn't react. He never reacted. But we as Christians, we 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 as Christians who are representing that man, Christ Jesus, we react over everything. But today, MCCI, I want us to be a church where we all will be marching up to Zion in the name of Jesus. Marching in to Zion. We all the writer said, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, hallelujah, sit down beside him and tell him what we have been through. All the things that the enemy have done. Lord, it's a miracle why we are here. And it's all about you. So just want to thank you. Just want to thank you. Just want to thank you, God. 
The Holy Spirit can empower us as a Christian to be effective witness for Jesus Christ. Nothing else but the Holy Spirit living in the grace of God. The Holy Spirit can seal people's soul and redeem and reconcile God, allowing them to live free from sin. We got to learn to live by the Spirit. Learn to live by the Spirit. Let God speak to you. But if you are obey, disobeying God, He cannot speak to you. There's no way you're going to hear Him. Because you're going to think that, oh, that's not what I want to hear. I want to hear something else. But let me tell you this. I, I love the preacher. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I want to be in the place where I can impact each other, where I can impact people. When I come in the building, the atmosphere must change. I'm not sitting down in this place in the same old cold atmosphere. When I get into the place, the atmosphere must change, the place must begin to get warm and warm and warmer. Remember one night we went to a prayer meeting. I, I just can't forget that night. And that night, I, I, I was asking God, I said, Lord, what should I do tonight? Allow the Spirit of God to work through you. What should I do tonight? And no answer from God all the way from my house until I open the door and get into the church. Nothing. I said, okay. I just gonna draw for something I did last week. And the Holy Spirit say, well, as we settle down, put some oil in your hand and touch everyone's hands. And I did just the same. The Holy Spirit take over the place. Those latecomers could not come in. They could not open the door and come in because of what's going on inside. They have to stay outside, listening on what's going on the inside until things get quiet down. They came in. And as soon as they came in, they were like, everybody was just like this. Allow the Spirit of God to work within you. Don't work by yourself. But I'm telling you this for nothing. If you begin to work and think that you're on an island and you can stand alone, you're wrong. You will fall. Grab somebody that you trust and say, Liz, I want you to pray, pray me up. Help me to stand because sometimes we can't make it on our own and we just need two persons because one can chase a thousand but Two will put 10,000 to flight, and I just need that second person to put that 2,000 to flight. So all I need, Lord, is just to hear from you. And if I hear from you, Lord, this world will be a better place. I need a touch from you. And we need a touch from God. Amen. Inside here, we need a touch from God. Let the Spirit of God use you. You don't use the Spirit. Let the Spirit of God use you. And sometimes we do, we try to use the Spirit. But let the Spirit of God use you, my brother, my sister. Don't focus on what the flesh desire because what the flesh desire it cannot and will not take you into heaven it will take you to the pit of hell that's where desire to take you in the name of Jesus in Romans 8 
verse 18, I think it said, For I consider that the suffering of this <coughs> present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. What I'm going through now, I'm just walking through it because I'm not going to let it hinder me for what God have for me. Because God have a bigger plan than the enemy has. The enemy plan is for now. And you're feeling nice and everything and all is good, but tomorrow or the next hour after, when he dropped you, because that's what the enemy does. He built you up and said, okay, I have you right where I want you. And then he, all he does, he just dropped you. But for God is forever and ever and ever. So choose God at all times. Don't let this flesh rule you. We, we, we heard someone said the heart is willing, but the flesh is weak. I don't want that kind of Christian around me. The heart is willing, but the flesh is weak. It's telling me plainly that, listen, I'm not going to listen what the heart say. I'm going to listen what the spirit is saying. I'm going to listen what the flesh is saying. That's what he's saying. But we need to listen to our heart. Heart is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh will overcome at all times. If the flesh is weak, the flesh should overcome. It's not the stronger thing. So I'm looking into it. Well, if the weak thing overcome you, God help you. God help you. Because there's nothing else. You won't be able to move mountain. You won't be able to speak to those things and those things move away out of your way. But I know that God has given us power inside this place. In the name of Jesus, where we can speak to mountains. And mountain got to move out of our way while I'm coming down. Mountain got to move out of your way. As much as we like to imitate apostle and don't do what he does. Amen. We like to pray for people and people get healed. We like to preach the way that he preached. But even if he gives you his message, there's no way you're going to do it the way that he did. So I came here today to tell you to stay in your own lane. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. That's all I want to say to you. Just look to someone and beside you and say, stay in your lane. And you know the reason why I want you to stay in my lane? Because I may be driving a little bit faster than you. And you come and hold me up. When you begin to hold up people, you're creating a different atmosphere. Allow people in front of you so that they can draw you. If you ever be running and someone try to pass you, and when they pass you, what you want to do? You don't know where the strength comes from, but you find yourself back up there and hat the front again. And that's what I'm saying. You don't stay in my lane. And I won't get into your lane. Because I may be a slower runner than you. And I will be hindering you from reaching the goalposts. Amen. I just want you to stand and do feet if you can. And we want to thank God for his presence in this place. 
We want to thank him for allowing us to be here today so we can hear what God is saying to us. Put away those things that's hindering your ministry away from your heart. Many of us should be way, way, way advanced from where we are, but we are allowing some things to hold us back. And today, I'm going to ask, or I was going to ask our apostle, just to come, we just want to call this altar call. If you are allowing something to hold you back and you want to break through from where you are, I'm just going to ask you, your ministry is right now on the surface, but you want it to lift off. I'm just going to ask you to come to the front. Remember, your ministry is on the surface and you want it to lift off. I'm just going to ask you to come to the front. Apostle will pray for you. He will pray for your ministry. Your prior life may, 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 may not be where it should be. Come. Come to the altar. Jesus is calling. He's calling for you to come home. He said, he who are weary, come home. 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 Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. To come home. Do you know the song?
very important. I did not know he was going to call me. And while he was preaching, there was something heavily on my mind. I turned to um, my own bearings for that day, and I'll show you something. I said, Listen, let me look at this. I watched this last night, and I should have passed the wind.
And people look at me, I seem quite slow at things. I don't seem very fast. Because God put me in a lane. Yeah. I'm on the inside track. So I walk around the lane. I'm just going to take, be with you another two minutes. I'm on the inside track. I don't run like a sprinter. Because I'm on the centre lane. Those who are on the other lane, they're sprinting like crazy. Just like Pastor was saying. They're on that outside lane. Like someone did 400 meters on the outside way. They're really moving, it seems. But the person in the inside the way takes 20 steps to do the circuit. The person on the outside takes 500 steps to do the circuit. So it's not he or she who is moving fast, it means that they are trapped. So we have to surrender our lives, fall at the feet of Jesus, so He can change us completely. Mind, body, soul, spirit, intentions, desires. Must be because why Paul said I was crucified with Christ to crucify ourselves, not in pain. Give up the things and the things that we do stupidly and stop. That's the preacher message. S T O P. Stop. 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 That's the preacher big evangelistic service. S T O P. S T O P. Stop. He knows it's hard to stop, but because it's your desire to stop, he puts arms around you and love you. And he'll take that power off you, but don't pick it up again and repeat it. Because then you break the covenant and the friendship with Jesus. to hell because he was doing something that nobody knew about. And he suddenly died. And he's still in hell. There's someone that most of us all know that you would never believe is in hell. Well, that's the story of somebody else. But we have to look after our own soul salvation. My personal soul salvation. I do not want to go to hell. Now let's lift up our hands. And let's pray this prayer. My Heavenly Father, I thank you and I appreciate the word of God that came through your son. those words deep into my spirit and when I come to church next time I will have no judgmentalism about me I can sit where I want to sit without any attitude of relations with my neighbor I will love everybody as myself I ask you Jesus as you taught your disciples, we must forgive one another. Seventy times seven in a day. Another place, seventy times seven. And you told your disciples, Jesus, repeat, please, repeat. You told your disciples that they must forgive one another and forgive their enemies. 70 times 7 in one day, which equals 490 times in one day. I must forgive people 
Because you can say, if we do not forgive, Jesus, you said, if we do not forgive, you will hand us over to the tormentors. These are the demons. Lord Jesus, wash me now. Take away my judgmental heart. Give me a pure spirit. Give me a clean heart. That I will not sin against you. That I will not sin against my brother or my sister. In the Lord. In Jesus' name. I receive the blood that washes me now. That washes my mind. That washes my spirit. I stand strong in God. I washed in the blood. I present myself to the cross. For the old rugged cross makes the difference. At the cross. At the cross. Where I first saw the light. And the pardon of my heart. And the sins rolled away. There by faith. I receive my sight. My Jesus. Make me over again. Make me a flesh. I will not go out of these doors and repeat those things that I keep praying over and presenting to you sinful things, attitudinal things that you are not pleased with.
Washington, Bishop, God bless you. Thank you. Let's put our hands together to bless our hands. I'm excited that many of you want to be in ministry. That's going to happen. Hallelujah. I'm really happy about it. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Look at your neighbor and just, you may take your seats. Look at your neighbor and just say, we, we had some church today. Amen. We had some, we had some church today. Amen. I want to, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but uh, I do need you to know on Friday night that uh, we asked 